everyone, I'm Ashley the App Scientist and welcome to Apex, The More You Know. Today we are going to solve a structure from just three minutes of data collection. How can you do that? I'm going to show you step by step. Let's zoom in to my screen. After centering your crystal on the instrument, go to Describe Sample and input the relevant information about your material. Then go to Evaluate Determine Unit Cell. On the far right, click Collect Data. You will be given choices about the detector distance, exposure time, and image width. I want to run a three-minute fast scan, so I am happy with the defaults. If you have a dual source instrument, you can change the anode here. Click Collect. After the three-minute fast scan is completed, you will be taken back to the screen with your newly collected images in the image viewer. Click on Harvest Spots. Here you can change the amount of reflections you want to harvest by changing the signal to noise ratio. I'm happy with 10 for this sample, but if you have weekly diffracting data, you can decrease this signal to noise ratio value. You can also adjust the slider bar to change the contrast of your image. Click Harvest. This is compiling all the reflections that have a signal to noise ratio larger than the value we put in that box. Here we have over 4,000 reflections. This is a very large number. I am usually happy with any number larger than 80. Next, click Index. And at the bottom of the screen, click Index again. This will try to find a relationship, a periodic pattern, between these reflections. Two different mathematical methods come up with similar results. This is a good sign. We are going to choose the method with the higher score value. It is automatically highlighted and selected for us. Click Accept. Now that we have a rough idea of how these reflections are related, we're going to refine them a bit. Click Refine a couple times. Then click Accept. We are going to skip the domain section for now. We will have a more in-depth discussion about that in another video. For now, we're going to click on Brave. This is going to give us, in green, the Brave lattices that our data fit best. In this case, orthorhombic P is selected. I am happy with this suggestion because even the monoclinic P option has three angles very close to 90 degrees. Click Accept. Now that we have the constraints of the Brave lattice, we are going to refine again. Click the Refine button. Once here, we will click Refine a couple more times. Click Accept. Now we have our unit cell. To see how well this relates to our actual data, right-click on one of the frames we collected in our 3-minute fast scan and choose Show Overlay. This puts little circles where reflections could be in this unit cell. Normally, we would go into Collect and determine a strategy for a full data collection, but I only need to know quick connectivity of this structure. So let's go straight to Reduce Data and Integrate Images. You can read in your 3-minute fast scan by clicking Find Runs or Import Runs from Experiment, then click Integrate. On the top left graph here, we want to see the spot shape correlation high and flat. On the bottom left, we want to see a nice round green circle. Looks great! Click Close. Then click on Scale. Our integrated .raw file is automatically read in for us. Click Start. Now click Refine. Looks beautiful. Click Next, and then click Finish. Now that scaling is done, click Exit. We're now going to navigate to Find Structure, and then Solve Structure. Because we're going to use intrinsic phasing to solve our structure, we don't need to input a space group. All we need here are the elements in our formula and our unit cell. Click Solve Structure. After some thinking, we get a beautiful structure solution of this chloroprofam sample. 
The solution is in the PBCA space group. Sometimes you will get a couple space group options and you can toggle between them using this drop down menu. Let's go refine this data. Click on Refine Structure. Let's run a quick refinement cycle on our model. And you can do that by clicking the lightning bolt. Right now, we have an R1 of 12% and a WR2 of about 36%. Not bad for a starting model. After some refinement that we will go over in another video, we end up with something gorgeous like this with an R1 of 4.6% and a WR2 of 15%. Not bad for just three minutes of data collection. If you're ready to experience the power of Apex for yourself, you can go to brukersupport.com to upgrade. New user? You can request a demo license and see how Apex can transform your lab's workflow. Thank you for joining me, Ashley the App Scientist, on this episode of Apex, The More You Know, where we explored the power of Apex and went from crystal to structure in just under five minutes. Tune in next time for more exciting crystallography. Until then, happy refining.